Okay, good morning everybody. Um, I'm Sarah Taylor, I'm the course leader for BA Honours Makeup for Media Performance and I'm going to be talking to you today all about the course, hopefully answering a lot of the questions that you might have um, and then you can ask me questions um, that you have. So let's just start with the first slide. So this is a, just a little bit of information about the Arts University here in Bournemouth and the course. Um, the university has received a gold standard rating from the um, Teaching Excellence Framework here in the United Kingdom. And we're very proud of the fact that the course is um, skill set accredited. Skill set are a body within the film industry who recognise training and the quality of training here at the Arts University and therefore have awarded us with the skill set tick. Our employment rate is um, very high. We have 95% employment rate from our graduates. Uh, last year, a lot of them finding work within the film industry, within um, commercial theatre, um, within television and um, within the fashion industry. Here are some of the reviews from um, some of the uh, people in industry who have uh, employed our students. So this is Christian Mallet. Um, you may have seen his work in the film The Theory of Everything um, and he's uh, employed quite a few of our students in the last few years. Now you've got a picture of the Queen here but actually it's the lady to the left who is called Sandra Smith and she's the head of wigs and makeup at the Royal Shakespeare Company um, in Stratford-upon-Avon which is where I used to work and she's now the head of department and um, she's employed three of our graduates um, who are working um, at the RSC. We have a lot of um, publicity for the course here in the United Kingdom. Um, we were lucky enough to have a, uh, an excellent write-up from um, the magazine Wallpaint, which you may be familiar with, which is an online publication, um, where Julia Townend um, um, wrote about the quality of work that we do here at the Arts University and why our students um, are employable and why this university would be a good choice for you if you want to study makeup. This is also an article from The Stage magazine. The Stage is a national newspaper um, about performing arts and um, again, another really good write-up here um, about the quality of our provision here at the Arts University. Some of you will be familiar with Harry Potter, the film series. And um, this gentleman you see in the middle here is Nick Dudman. And um, he, this photo was taken at the International Makeup Trade Show in London which our third years attend and demonstrate on the stand um, to an audience of between nine and 11,000 makeup um, professionals and enthusiasts. And here he's critiquing some, of, um, some work by Leanne, one of our third years, who's now working with him in Prague. The course has been running for quite a few years, um, since 2009. But a lot of my staff have been teaching for um, more than 15 years. And so this is Kelly, um, who was a student who I taught about 15 years ago, who now works on The Late Show in the USA. So the course specification, as in the um, award, is BA Honours Makeup for Medium Performance. The course is validated here at the Arts University Bournemouth, and it's a three-year full-time course. I can't overemphasise how much it is full time. Um, our students are in the studios three days a week. They also attend evening lectures. And there is so much other collaborative work that goes on um, around that um, teaching and engagement. So it is really a five day, 40 hour week course that you're, you're going to be joining. So this is the entry uh, criteria for the course. You'll need to have gained at least 120 tariff points. Um, and or equivalent, um, depending on where you are in the world and what your qualification structure is. Our applications come, come through a system called UCAS here in the UK, which is a sorting office for all applications for university. And um, once you've applied for the course, um, you will be asked to send a portfolio, a digital portfolio of your work to us for us to assess. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what that portfolio would consist of. If you're interested in, in finding out information about the portfolio, this is just a screenshot from our website. 
um, which shows you where you'll be able to find that information. And there's a, um, a pamphlet which explains exactly what we would like to see in your portfolio. OK, let's have a look at some of the examples. We're very keen for you to be able to draw from life. So life drawing is really important to us. You're going to be working on the body. You're going to be working on the face. You're going to be working with people's hair. So understanding the canvas that you're going to be working on is really key. The images you can see in this, um, on this slide are examples that we have seen in portfolios that have all gained successful entry to the course. Some of you may be interested in prosthetics. It's very, um, very much an area um, that students are keen to get involved with. And so you may do any sort of three-dimensional work, even if you haven't done any prosthetics. So sculptural work is really, is, is really good to see. Sometimes it might be really heavy, so if you're coming to interview, you may just want to photograph your work to give us an indication of the size and the texture and what it is we're looking at. Um, painting, um, different mediums that you like to work with. It may be that you like to work in charcoal and chalk. It may be that you like to work in acrylic paint or watercolours. We would like to see um, your work in different mediums. Sketchbook work, the development of a project, the journey of your projects. We're interested in your responses in that way. So you may have some photographs from sketchbook work that um, have led to the final piece and we would like to see those. We always ask for an ex example of a written essay and that's to look at your engagement and your communication in writing. Um, it may be a report that you've written, it might be an essay, it might be a critical reflection. So a piece of writing is really important as well. And of course you're applying to a makeup course, so we like to see that you have an interest, that you're enthusiastic about that. So um, it doesn't have to be at professional level, but some sort of engagement where you've applied makeup, preferably to others, um, that you may have done some hair work, or that you may have done some prosthetic works. But those are not essential. Um, it's really the life drawing, the sculpture, the painting and the sketchbook and the writing that is most important in the portfolio. This is our course philosophy. The course explores the representation of makeup within the physicality of the body and its relationship to medium performance. Now, what does that mean? Our course explores what makeup is, why we apply it, how it's read in context, how an audience perceive makeup, and that relates to identity, uh, culture, um, history. And we look at that in all the different contexts that you would see makeup, whether it's for theatre, for film, for television, on a fashion catwalk, um, so as a body paint. So there are lots of different contexts that we explore. You will be developed as a professional and creative makeup innovator, designer, supervisor, and artist. The course is developed to enable you to work up the ladder to higher positions. Um, you know, to become someone who innovates within the industry, someone who changes the way. Uh, that techniques and processes are done at the moment. Our course aims, really, there's three main ones for, for me, which is to produce creative, dedicated professionals. Having the skills and the knowledge to be employable is the most important thing. At the end of your degree, you want to be able to get a job and to develop your career in the area of the industry that you're interested in. The course will enable you to do that um, by developing that understanding of what um, it means to be employable. You'll develop your skills within a specialist creative community. You'll be working alongside other courses here. You'll be working with, um, with costume designers, with filmmakers, with fashion designers, with commercial photo photographers. And that will enable you to understand how you uh, collaborate with each other and how that would work in the real world. To raise awareness of the historical and contemporary context is really important. You may be working on um, a 1930s production like Poirot, Agatha Christie's Poirot. Poirot. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, so he's a, he's a French detective with a very strange, little, very uh, manicured moustache. Um, you know, you'd have to understand not just the context of the 1930s and how people looked in the 1930s, but you'd also have to think about the fact that um, everything today is filmed in high definition. So the types of makeup you can use, the products, how you, um, how you demonstrate character to a contemporary audience would 
change the way you approach that 1930s makeup. So understanding that um, the similarity between the historical context and then how you have to change that for the contemporary audience is really important. You may be working on a burlesque show, um, and um, you know, but it, so it's got a historical element to it, but it's for a fashion catwalk. So changing it to meet the needs of the designer um, would be exploring history and context at the same time. Yes, um, found, our foundation course here is excellent at preparing students for, um, for the makeup um, course. You know, you will explore different mediums to work in. You will, um, the things that I've shown you in the portfolio, you will explore those things so that you have a really good understanding of the uh, creative um, disciplines that you'll need when you start the course. Okay? Okay, this is our course kit that I'm showing you now. I love this photo of the additional finger. Um, but this is just the kind of things we do in, in sessions. Um, our course, ha it's really important I'm transparent about how much the course kit is. It is a mandatory kit that all students buy. Um, it is the case for all makeup degrees in the UK that there is a mandatory kit to buy. Um, we've, this is on top of your course fees. It will be at the beginning of the first year. So the makeup, hairdressing, wig making, that is our first year kits. And um, we do our best with suppliers to get, you know, um, significant discounts for you. Um, and um, we also review that every year with students because we change the kits as, um, you know, products develop. Um, and then the prosthetic kit, the one that's £199, our students buy that at the end of the first year when they have when they are progressing into the second year. So that helps to spread the costs out a little bit. It is all materials, equipment, um, makeup brushes, um, you know, all the things that we would expect to last you well into your uh, careers, as well as consumables such as the makeup products themselves. The kit will last you for the first and second year. In the third year, our students budget their projects depending on what they want to specialise in. Um, they write their own projects in the third year. Um, so, um, so the kit is for the first and second year only. They will, you know, some of the products you'll still, still use in the third year. But there may be other products you need to buy in the third year to supplement what you're doing with your project. Okay, we get our makeup kit from a company called Tilt here in the UK, um, mm. and um, that's one of the makeup kits. And we also get products from MAC uh, Cosmetics. Um, we use a lot of Kryolan products, we use Paint Illustrator, um, all sorts of different um, top brands depending on what we're doing with projects. Um, our brushes, uh, our Nancy brushes. Um, so yeah, there's uh, Tilt's put it together for us, but there's probably about uh, 20 different cosmetics uh, companies within the kit itself. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I've got some um, images to show you. Um, so the next few slides are merely just to show you um, the type of work we do. So this was a project um, where that you're looking at now where students, um, they made the organs using mould making techniques. So they're using the prosthetic techniques, but um, they made, uh, some of them made a blancmange actually, some of the organs that you're looking at. But it was um, to, to promote this NSS, uh, sorry, NHS campaign. Um, uh, so this is some character work you're looking at here. This is first year work. Um, this was um, an Aardman uh, Creature Comforts project that students were working on. Um, this is a project that, this, this, again, this is first year project. We did about tarot cards. So uh, you've got the Joker on the left and the devil uh, just next to him. And then you've got Justice. Uh, so you can see that these are theatrical characters. This is some prosthetics, so it's different context again, for a film that students worked on. These are some characters, this was a project about, um, um, about portraits coming to life and becoming makeups. I've got some fashion work here, working with fashion stylists and with photo uh, photographers. Again, some prosthetics um, 
you know, and you've got the lovely movement there with the body. Fashion shoots, um, you know, students doing commercial uh, makeups, enhancing faces, um, disguising faces here. Simulating operations, that's quite a gory picture, isn't it? Um, but, um, you know, so these are prosthetics on the body, again, that would be filmed. Um, a bit like, um, you know, Casualty, which is a series we have based in a hospital here in the UK. Um, deformity, we look at, disfigurement. Um, and this was one of the shots that was published for our summer show that we did here. The third years have an exhibition here at the university. Um, and this was their facade show. Again, more images of people working with uh, models in fashion. Um, again, you can see here, trying to match the portrait. This is a series of um, hair, hair pieces that a student made. Um, yeah, and again, a nice prosthetic, some more fashion enhancing work. Um, and this photo um, went viral. This was one of um, our makeups from a third year a few years ago. It was shown at the International Makeup Trade Show and it went viral on, um, on the internet. Um, but really beautiful quality work. Um, ageing, you know, as a, um, a standard kind of job you'll have to do as a makeup artist is to age an actor at some point. So here we see a student doing a multi-piece prosthetic ageing. We have, it's a large team here that teach on the makeup course. There are 15 of us in the makeup um, department. And we all come from different areas of the industry. That's really important to me because you will do things in a different way depending on if you're working in theatre, you make a ball cap very differently to if you're working um, in film or television. So my background um, is theatre. I'm what's called the wiggy on the course. Um, and um, I do a lot of character work with the students and developing makeups through um, script analysis. This is Caroline. She's a BBC makeup designer. Her work is very much to do with high definition and television and film and how you make um, you change someone without people noticing the changes to the face. So Amanda, Amanda teaches our contextual studies. She um, helps students to develop um, their writing skills and to also communicate and problem solve through writing um, throughout the course. Uh, this is Jess, and the, the great thing about Jess is that she was a graduate from the Arts University Bournemouth six years ago. She's, uh, she left here, she went into the industry, worked at the wig store in London, she's worked for Bobby Brown, um, and she's done some great um, experience working on Call the Midwife, which is a BBC makeup, um, BBC production, and um, she's come back as a lecturer here last year. This is Kat, who's um, a freelance makeup artist. She also has her own makeup um, business. She does a lot of bridal work. She takes students with her to do, uh, to do the bridal applications. Um, and so that's Kat. Who else have we got here? Oh, hello. This is t uh, Tony. This is Tony Dixon. Um, he teaches design to our students. Um, he teaches about the aesthetics of design, design theory. Um, and that helps you to consider how you change the face and why some makeup work, some makeups work really well, um, and to have appropriate choices for how you design makeup. Wayne is our prosthetic uh, makeup lecturer. Um, we've just done a project based on gangsters in the 1930s. So our students have been making these wonderful kind of Dick Tracy-esque prosthetics. Um, he comes, his background is in hyper-realistic um, orthopedic prosthetics. And so he teaches students our mold making techniques, our sculpting for prosthetics and prosthetic manufacturing and materials. We have a lot of visiting tutors on the course. I think that's really important for um, for students to network and to be made, um, for these people to be made available in, edu in the educational um, kind of arena. Um, current makeup artists um, supplement your, um, your learning um, by coming in to do workshops, um, processes, um, talks, lectures. We have a symposium at the end of the year where we have a lot of guest speakers such as Brian Kinney, who's been working on Game of Thrones, um, talked about his work on that last year in our symposium. I mentioned Nick Dubman to you earlier, um, who uh, was the 
uh, special effects makeup artist, creature effects artist for the Harry Potter series. And we're very lucky that Nick is our honorary fellow for the course here, which means he champions the, co the course. Um, he, he comes in to talk to students about particular things. He interviewed students in mock interviews um, a couple of years ago. But he's also um, been really helpful with employing students. He's employed over 12, yeah, 13 students now who've been working with him on um, productions um, such as Penny Dreadful and Carnival Row that's been being filmed in Prague. Um, there are lots of national competitions going on in the UK for makeup artists and um, we, uh, we have awards for students who, who win um, prizes so we actively encourage um, our students to get involved in competitions. They are always really good fun, they're nothing to do with assessment um, and um, you know, it's, a, it's a really good way to promote yourself as a makeup artist on the, in sort of the national arena. Um, so we've been very, um, very lucky in the wins that we've had. Um, to add to these that you're looking at, we've just had a, a third prize awarded to one of our second years, um, who's just won at um, Brush Wars competition, which is a, a very well-known uh, national makeup competition. Uh, because we have the skill set accreditation, um, we were. I was honoured to be um, receive an email from BAFTA. Um, to um, award us with a keynote speaker and we were lucky enough to secure Ivana Primorak um, who, as you can see from her credits here, um, did a wonderful lecture which was about when you work on a production and you have no budget and she talked a lot about Billy Elliot and how she had to be creative with, um, with things in the kitchen, products you find in the kitchen, in order to make him look sweaty when he's dancing. Um, so it was a really interesting um, discussion. The USP of our course really is um, the way in which the Arts University um, undergraduate courses collaborate here and obviously makeup is kind of an interface of that community. Um, so you will have the opportunity to work in a professional way um, with other like-minded individuals on other courses. Here are some of the courses that we work with here. We're lucky enough to have actors. We're Next year we're doing 10 productions which happen um, either at um, our theatre here on site or at Pavilion Dance or at um, the Lighthouse Theatre in Poole. So we get to work with costume designers, with costume makers, with commercial photography, um, with dance, with fashion, um, with film production and visual effects. This year, our first years worked on a film where there was an explosion in a factory and that the explosion was put in, um, edited in afterwards um, so that they can see the explosion happening. All the makeup was of the carnage of the explosion. So, um, you know, it's a really lovely collaborative project that we did together. Here are some examples of projects that we've done. This is Candide, Candide. it's a, a play by Voltaire, 18th century play. This is again a first year project. What we did with the students here um, was working with costume. So the costumes that you see are first year costume um, and performance design. But the wigs that you're looking at are actually really cheap synthetic party wigs that you can buy online. So what we did is we, we bought a load, we ripped them apart, so we deconstructed them and then we reconstructed them into these beautiful 18th century uh, wigs that you can see. This was a pop video we made called Vampire and um, we filmed this down on the beach actually. You can see the top left photo there, um, the makeup students taking the wigs off down on the beach. Um, it was slightly ironic that we were doing a vampire video on the hottest day of the year. Um, you know, we did have a couple of people faint. Um, but what this was enabled students to do um, was to look after their artist for continuity of makeup. You know, actors have to eat, they have to drink. Um, and so they were looking after their artist all day to ensure that the continuity of the film was precise, not a hair out of place. Um, we did the film to um, uh, Babushka, which is a song by Kate Bush. So it was kind of a remake of a pop video. This is a film that we worked on um, with film production and also with costume and performance design called The Glass Slipper, which was um, a remake of, of Cinderella. And um, this is actually an award-winning film. We won a fresh award for, um, for our production. Work experience is really important. Um, and 
a lot of our second and third years go on work experience. We find that the first year is really busy, but actually industry would prefer if you're more um, knowledgeable, more developed, so they would prefer if we send a, a second and third year. It happens in many different ways. A job might come through to me um, where they're looking for a particular person. A student might say, you know, I'm, I'm going to Pinewood Studios. Um, so uh, it happens in many different ways. In this slide, you can see some students working at Millennium Effects. Um, they're the company who did all the prosthetics on Lady Gaga for the fashion shoot she did. Um, but they are doing a lot of mould making here for the Iron Maiden uh, Eddie Head, uh, uh, which was the, the big sort of skull face that comes up on the tour at the back. So um, a lot of the time you're um, asked to sign a, dis a disclosure so that you're unable to talk about what you've been seeing you know you could be working on something like the Christmas Doctor Who so you wouldn't be able to tell people anything about what you've seen or what's been happening or the plot of the story um, so um, so yes there's lots of opportunity to do work experience we're quite flexible about it as long as um, it's manageable um, and still be able to meet you know the project requirements and the hand in we can be as flexible as possible the industry is like that you know if something's being filmed at Elstree next week then it has to be next week so um, yeah we can be flexible about that we also get involved with fashion shows um, our, our third years um, designed and applied for the Bournemouth fashion show we had um, which is an annual event here in Bournemouth we also have taken part in the London fashion show at the Truman and Brewery these are some images of our productions. I spoke earlier about um, the fact that we have next year 10 productions going on. And our students work in, um, have the opportunity to run the wig and makeup department. So it might work that a third year is the wigs and makeup designer and they would get second years and first years to deputise and to assist. So not only do you have the opportunity to work across course, you also have the opportunity to work with students in the year above you who will have um, you know, a higher role, as in you know, they're being assessed on it as the designer, this is their project. So um, as I was saying, our shows happen at Pavilion Dance at the Lighthouse Theatre um, and um, they're really good fun. They do mimic um, real life. You know, they are to a live audience. Um, and of course, you know, you can't, um, sometimes things go wrong um, and there's nothing you can do about it. When you're working in theatre, it's not like film, you can't retake the shot, it's happened. So um, it's a really good way to prepare you if you're interested in working in, in theatre. The, the top right hand picture, the two girls with their hands up like this, you can see, that was our production of The Boyfriend. And um, Natalie, the student who was the wigs and makeup designer for that, when she left, um, her first job was as makeup trainee on um, Coronation Street, which is um, a very well-known uh, soap opera here in the UK. We have a few educational visits. Um, we, as I was saying earlier, we always have a stand at the International Makeup Trade Show, um, which we, you know, we recommend students attend. And our third years will be there showing their uh, final makeup transformations on the stand. Um, this year we went and saw Othello at Shakespeare's Globe on the Embankment in London. And last year, year before last, year before last, we did um, a New York trip. This year, so in March, we're going to India. We're going to look at the sourcing of hair. Um, we're visiting the Kathakarthi um, theatre makeup. Um, so um, it does change, the educational visits change. We tend to do them once every three years, sometimes biannually, though, those overseas trips. But it does help students to realise about their career on an international level. Um, you know, for example, Guardians of the Galaxy was all filmed here in the UK, but all the pickup shots were done in the US. So their international travel might be something that's appealing to you um, in terms of your career development. We have a lot of other industry speakers who um, supplement um, learning. Um, depending um, on what's going on, you know, what are the, what are the issues in the industry. Um, so Illa Masca have been here. Again, Christian Mallet, um, who came in to demonstrate prosthetics to students. This is Michelle Grant. She's an award-winning um, hair artist. Um, so uh, she makes beautiful headdresses and integrates them with hair. 
uh, Tilt who provide our kits, um, they come in and they, they always provide a workshop to talk about new products, um, you know, um, up and coming ideas, how products are changing. This is John Moore that you can see on the left and I taught John um, about 15 years ago now. He was one of the first students I taught when I became a teacher and uh, he's been um, supervising um, the makeup for Drax the Destroyer on Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, and you can see on the right, Dave Batista, he's wearing all these flat piece prosthetics, which are, um, you know, John's work. MAC Cosmetics, obviously the leader, um, leading cosmetic supplier um, and brand. And um, so uh, this is Cher, uh, one of their uh, lead makeup artists. She talked a lot about, um, you know, working on uh, Paris Fashion Week and Milan and New York and um, just the reality um, of something that sounds very glamorous but is actually really hard work. Um, so she talked about lifestyle um, when you're working as an international makeup artist. Gilles is a, a foam latex technician and um, he specialises in foam. Um, so uh, we have foam ovens here um, in our workshops. And obviously students are very keen to use foam. It's a very lightweight material. Um, so you can make large prosthetics for people to wear. So he teaches the students all about foam latex. You, uh, you can see that there, when I talked earlier about the context for makeup, that students progress into the industry in so many different fields um, of work, you know, whether they go into film. So we've had um, students who've just been working on Fantastical Beasts, The Crime of Grimwald. We've had graduates working on that. Um, and we've also had people work, who were on work experience working on that. So um, lots of opportunity to get involved with the film industry here in the UK. Again, there's television examples there. Um, one of our students was interviewed by Sarah Grundy, who's one of the designers for the Durrells, which is an ITV um, series. And um, she interviewed her while she was in the third year and offered her employment. So, um, so this student had a job before she'd left the course and working um, on the Durrells. You can see there's a lot of fashion promotional and editorial work, lots of people working as freelance um, commercial makeup artists. And then there's the theatre, the wig departments, um, you know, some really prestigious places um, where students are working, like the English National Opera and the Royal Shakespeare Company. And then you also have the prosthetic makers, the designers, <clears throat> and waxworks, you know, places like um, Madame Two Swords, where students have, um, you know, been painting the waxworks and things, as well as for people like Mark Coulier. Mark Coulier won the um, Oscar for The Iron Lady, the film about Margaret Thatcher. Um, and he's, um, he's got one of our graduates working with him at the moment. So that brings me to the end of my PowerPoint. Uh, my last slide is always, does anyone have any questions? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So thank you.